Are you a Dodge fan? Because available at CletusMcFarland.com is the first Mopar shirt we have ever done. That's right, no car like a Mopar with the Hellcat on it. Go get them while they last. They're only $26 at Bald Eagle or CletusMcFarland.com. Guys, I am at TBM Brakes for a long overdue upgrade on my car. I've been rocking 1999 V6 Mustang brakes on this car, doing 170 miles an hour in the quarter. It is time to go lighter and more efficient with my brakes. So here we are, TBM. We got Dr. Pepper here on the lift. We're gonna tear the brakes off. I've already upgraded it by deleting the brake booster and going with the TBM bracket and riding all new lines. So let's get this thing on here. Pretty excited about it. All right, so this is what we're working with in the rear. We got Mensers coilovers, best in the business. These things hook straight up when I, uh, first time I put them on, I didn't even adjust them at all. But most importantly, we're talking about brakes today. You can see these are solid. We're gonna go to a thinner that is just vented, not vented, but it's uh, drilled. Solid. Yeah. It's drilled. And so we got to get all this stuff off here. We're going to do a weight comparison of this with the TBM. Uh, what do we got cooking right here with Dr. Pepper? What are you drinking? <laughs> Celsius. Celsius. What are you drinking? Monster. White Monster. White Monster. <laughs> oh, all right. It's terrible. Caffeine. Got the new hat and uh, rotor here. Tell us yep. a little about this. So What's cool about these hats, most hats are just flat. Um, you can see there's actually three stair steps on them because they mount in, what, eight locations? And you can flip this over, too. Yeah, right? and so you can... So, these give you about 70 to 100 thousands between each, not exact. So you can actually make it adjust, you know, to your axle offset. And then if you want to go halfway in between those steps, um, this is actually machined and it can be flipped either way. So if this is too big of a jump, you can flip it and vice versa. So virtually, no matter who made your axles, you know, if they made them right, if they made them on a Monday or a Friday or a Tuesday and they're machined differently, we can adjust to that so that the rotor actually sits perfectly in the center of the caliper so that you're not dragging. It's a huge part of putting this stuff together. And if you're stuck with a flat surface and a flat surface that can't be adjusted, you're kind of where you are. Yeah. And you end up spacing stuff with washers. That's never a good idea. So these guys you are thinking ahead. Yeah. Right. So, yep. so you, you can either kind of guesstimate what, what it needs to be, or if you take what your axle offset is, subtract, half the thickness of the rotor yeah, and half the thickness of the caliper, that's gonna give you the exact depth you need and you just go in and measure and find out what that depth is and fold you're, it on. You're calling it. it without even mocking it up. Which yeah. one's it gonna be? It is going flat side down on the bottom step. All right, let's but, see how she fits. But he really lost me at axle offset. I kind of tuned out after that. <laughs> Blacked out, I don't know. The cool thing, the other cool thing about these is they're actually slotted this direction, which makes them able to be used with four and a half or four and three quarter axles half inch or five eighths. So the same hat works for all those different patterns. So you don't have to like send stuff back and forth to us. We just don't get that with TBM. C coming soon, they'll also have five on five on there as well. Yeah. So you'll be able to tackle the real big every other stuff. Yeah. Nice. So there's a few different options of brake fluid. There's dot three, dot four, dot five, and dot 5.1. Dot five is a silicone based fluid and it's extremely popular in like the hot rotting world because it won't eat up paint like the other types of fluid. The disadvantage of it is it causes the seals to swell mm -hmm. and this will cause the brakes to drag. So ah. on a high performance unit where you're trying to alleviate any brake drag, you want to run a dot three, dot four, or dot five point one that's not silicone based um, to prevent that from happening. So the, the TBM fluid that you carry? The TBM fluid we have is a high temp dot five point one brake fluid and it's compatible with any dot three or dot four. So you don't have to flush your entire system out. You can just add it and, and go. All right, guys, here's the weight of the TBM kit for one of the rear corners. We're looking at about 
11.95 pounds with the pads and all the hardware, the caliper, the rotor, the hat, everything. Let's put the stock unit up there and see what she weighs. Wow, 18 pounds. So what is that? That's about yeah. more than 60% weight reduction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pretty so good. what is let's do about rotating yeah. mass. Rotating mass, so just the rotor is 10.2 pounds on the stock unit. And the TBM rig is 6.45. So saving about almost 20 pounds yeah, of rotating mass on the entire car. Okay, so traditionally on your car that you drive to work every day, most of your clamping force on your brakes is up front. But however, on a drag setup like this, most of the clamping force is going to be in the rear. So after crunching some numbers, we did the math and it's 750 times more clamping force in the rear and there's actually a 50% reduction in the front. And the reason why most of it's in the rear because when you're hauling the mail down the track and you know, you're doing 150, 180 miles an hour, you want most of your clamping force to be in the back because it's the bigger tire. You don't want to lock up these front skinnies. I've done it before, you can bald spot your tires, you create a bunch of smoke and you have possibility of wrecking. So, you know, like I said, this, most of the clamping force is gonna be in the rear of this car, but most of the weight savings is gonna be up front. Look at the difference in the front caliper and rotor. And I can't believe, I just can't believe how big of a difference that is. It's huge. Is it same, same diameter? Yeah, it's same diameter. Well, it's the day of the Danger Ranger race and Dave and I, who is Zach Walker's brother, who you guys have seen on the channel plenty of times and I have been grinding on the Ranger and it's not looking good. We're going over grounds and power and we're having relay issues, and so we're trying to diagnose the car so we can get out there. It's already 12.30. The racing starts at 2.30, so we got a little bit of time left, but hey, let's get to it. We love working on this stuff, and uh, I just want to race. I love. This is my favorite race of the year. Last year, we had a good chance of doing things, but JH Diesel took us out, which I'm still a little salty about. Okay, so we ran new power and grounds everywhere because, you know, we're thinking that's a good place to start, um, but we have a connector that we don't really know it goes to something it's some kind of ground it's kind of been floating around so we're gonna do some looking around and see what we can figure out so dave and i found this connector underneath the fuse box that seems to be some kind of ground so we're gonna plug this in and see if we can't get her fired up all right man how many times have we tried to start this thing about 20 about 20 least. times we got the ground replugged back in you get that tape back up we've been pulling plugs oh we need to get this spark plug back in or do you already do that all right let's give her a rip Let's go. No girl ain't too happy. Bleed that clutch out some more. Yeah. Okay, so we got a running ranger, guys. But anytime I'm under power, we're overflowing water like crazy. We're hoping we don't have a blown head gasket, but we're seeing some other things that are leading us to believe so. Let me show you what those are. So we have oil or remnants of oil in the radiator, which is a brand new radiator. So that should not be doing that, right? That came so out of the block. First start up on this radiator shouldn't look like that. No. This is brand new. All right, we're gonna try this again. It's not looking good for the old McDonald's Ranger.
much pressure's in the hose. Or just off running for a couple of seconds. You want to call a time of death? <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? Yeah. Sucks. Can't put a boat What in time is hours. it? 2.05. It's 2.05. We're calling time of death. Oh, she's not happy. She's not happy. She's definitely getting compression into the, the cooling system. So going to have to pull the heads off her, but we just don't have time and all the parts to do it for the race. I should have prepared more for this, but I honestly thought this thing was a goner, but we'll get it right for next year. I mean, I got to let this thing live on. It's a, it's a beautiful truck. Ford Ranger splash, baby. It's going. Do you guys remember the 12 valve swap galaxy? Well, it is coming to Cleus and cars coming up here in November at the freedom factory. My good buddy, Sean Steimer bought that car from my brother and he's shipping it all the way out here from Arizona. But Sean also develop, helped develop this product. I'm about to show you. If you guys like to golf or just hit a couple balls with your buddies every once in a while, this product is gonna really help you. Impact Tees, if you use my code PARKER1100, it'll get you 10% off of your purchase. So how this works, you got your ball, you're at the range, you put your Impact Tee in to the top of the ball, and how it works is if you make contact with the tee or if it swings, that means that you are swinging too high. You need to get down underneath the ball a little bit more. Check out this video demonstration. You can clearly see that he is hitting underneath the impact tee, illustrating that he is hitting the ball correctly and not high enough. We've all hit golf balls before and chopped them and sliced them and you know everything like that. I don't know all the golf terminology, but basically how it works is you put your ball in here, put your impact tee over it. Come and get come up here, Caroline. Get, get, get this close here. You can see the impact tee comes up and over the ball, and it's illustrating that. If you hit the ball correctly, you should go completely under the impact tee without making contact with it. If you are swinging too high, like if you're swinging, if you're swinging too high, you're gonna hit the tee. So you set the impact tee over the top of the ball, just like this. That would be a, oh, <laughs> give me that thing. Hey, come here. Oh shit. <laughs> come here. You want this? You want this? We have a wild there polar bear. All right, now this. Let me show you what a bad hit would look like. Get your impact tee. This would be me hitting too hot. Get, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Good. See how I hit the impact tee? <laughs> Winston, you're ruining the shot, bud. Get out of here. All right, guys, like I said, you can get these at impacttees.com. Link is in the description. Use my code PARKER1100, and it'll get you 10% off your order. They're super great way to make your golf game just a little bit better. And make sure you guys are watching. <laughs> make sure you guys are watching. Cleus and Cars are coming out. Tickets are available online at thefoat.com. You can watch pay-per-view as well, because that Galaxy is going to be ripping. He's been doing a lot to that thing, and I can't wait for you all to see it. The real star, though. <laughs> and i have both of my cars finally in the garage i moved in here like four or five months ago and i have been piecing these things back together so that they are finally in running condition well the hellcat is and that thing's making like 900 wheel horsepower but i have some upgrades for it today that i have been so excited about dr pepper She's sitting here waiting on her wiring harness, but she is ready to fire up as soon as that thing comes in and I get it wired up and dialed up. So let's get to the Hellcat. We are gonna be taking this thing to the track tomorrow. So I gotta do some adjustments and swap out some parts. So, you know, Dr. Pepper gets treated with the best wheels on the market. We got billet specialties, but, oh, and the TBM brakes. I mean, look at that combo. It's just absolutely beautiful, but for the Hellcat. I'm tired of the stock wheels. So the boys at Built Specialties got me set up with some of the sickest wheels you could possibly put on a Dodge Challenger. These things are bead locked. Now I got the skiddies up front. I am rocking Mickey Thompson's. I got the ET Street S's. Or wait, they're the ET Street SS's. I wanted a little bit of tread on them since I am going to be driving this thing on the street. And then I have their, uh, gosh, what's this tire called? It's the same thing I run on the front of Dr. Pepper, but oh, it's their Sportsman series. And I really like the tread on this thing. Before we put these wheels on, since they are 15s in the rear, you have to change out the sway bar and links on these Challengers. I've already tried to put these wheels and tires on 
and they don't fit because the sway bar actually hits the wheel and tire. So you have to shorten those end links and I'll kind of show you what those products look like. It's a super easy job. So we're gonna get this thing up on the jacks and get it swapped out. So you can order these kits or you can modify these stock sway bar links, but and I got these from B Woody. They're a little bit beefier, a little bit thicker than the stock ones, but basically it's bringing these two end links shorter, which is actually dropping the sway bar. And I'll show you once I pull this wheel off. All right, so here's what we're working with. Here is the rare sway bar. And these end links right here, you can see they're a little bit thin. And here is the replacement, a little bit thicker. So it also brings this sway bar down. And what that does is it allows for a smaller diameter wheel since the stock ones are 20s. These are 15s, we gotta tuck that sway bar underneath the wheel diameter and that way it doesn't rub. So all we gotta do is pull out the bolt that's on the top right here and then the one that's down below and we'll get these swapped in. And in comparison to stock, you can see how much beefier or wider or thicker that these shortened sway bar links are. And in comparison, the B Woody ones are about 13 millimeters in diameter and these are stock ones are about seven millimeters in diameter that's right you heard me using metric because it's the better system guys these wheels just came out absolutely killer we just got her loaded up with some e85 it was thirsty it took a full 16 and a half gallons but she's full she's ready for the track the only thing we gotta get her a little bit lower. She's sitting a little high in the rear and the front. It'd be nice to get it down a couple inches and then she will be absolutely dialed. I was about to load the Challenger up into the trailer to take it to the track tonight and we have oil spewing everywhere, dang it. The Hellcats have an oil cooler and there's a feed and a return and they're like these nylon, they're not nylon, but they're rubber hoses and they split. I mean, this thing's got 180,000 miles on it, it's six years old. Rubber lines are gonna break. They're gonna get old, they're gonna wear, and they're gonna split. And so I was all hyped up to go to the track, but hey, I can't drag oil all the way down that track when everyone's out there trying to have fun. So I'm gonna get it on the lift, get it up in the air, and we're still gonna go out to the track. I still gotta do some repairs on Sam's trailer just to keep maintenance up, and then we'll uh, go watch some racing. When you're idling on your driveway and you get that much oil, it ain't good. So on these cars, there is an oil cooler that sits underneath the front bumper cover right here. And I know that it's either the feed or the return line that's leaking. They are rubber hose. You can kind of see it right here. And one of them is split. So I'm gonna cut the sheathing off, see if I can identify which one, pull it out and get it patched up for the weekend. All right guys, we didn't bring the Hellcat out tonight, but Sam and I are here supporting the local test tune at Brainston Motorsports Park. And there is a Hellcat here. That car is breaking up real bad the whole track. Guys, back with some Dr. Pepper content. It's like eight in the morning and I was laying in bed and I think I figured out why the car's not starting. There's a relay that I didn't have wired for the coils and the injectors. So we're gonna get this plugged in and see if we can't get the car started. All right, fuel pump on. Ah, I think I know what it is. Freaking cam sensors unplugged. Ah, that should help them. grinding and I think it's because I don't have enough trans fluid because the rear wheel started spinning while I was in park so I hope I didn't just burn up this power glide 
Uh, we gotta get some more fluid in this thing. Okay, we got some more transmotion fluid in her and the gear selector was in park and the wheels were spinning. So that's not a good sign, but I got our neutral. We're gonna get it fired back up and check the fluid levels again because the car's running, guys. Big fire me up right there. However, if I wanna get this thing show ready for tomorrow for uh, a trunk or treat, then we got some work to do. My people, we are about to embark on Dr. Pepper's journey back into the wild. What better place to go than go to the gas station? I mean, the car's running. It's got a lot of dialing in to do. This is the old wiring harness and I have a new one coming from Racewire Solutions, but I just wanted to get the car going again. I've been working so hard on it and I know y'all have been asking for it. So let's go take this thing for a drive. Scratch that, I'm getting a low oil pressure error reading. So we gotta figure that out real quick. All right, I think I got it fixed. It was just an unplugged sensor. Not proud of what I had to do to force it in there, but we're dialed. Let's see if we got oil pressure. If you guys haven't seen the back of this thing yet, I've got a 20 gallon fuel cell in the back and then my intercooler back here as well. So this is kind of where I put in pump gas. So right now I'm putting 93 in it. We're sitting at about 339 a gallon or 394 a gallon. So I'll probably put about 10 gallons in it just to kind of get her topped off. It's pretty dirty back here. Still got to clean it up, but she's back on the road. Thanks, man. You guys got me parked next to a Ferrari. Who you guys got? I mean, I've probably got as much money into this thing as that thing is worth, but my money's on this thing all day long. You know this is a faster car. But God dang, that fresh paint is looking good, boy. Love it. <laughs> 